What's up guys, it's your boy Michael here and god damn I just got done watching game 6, well not really just got done, I mean I got in a shower after the game got over, but we gotta talk about this, okay? And we're gonna talk about a couple things. First off, uh, the Andrew Bogut injury, because this is like bittersweet for me, because I honestly want the Cavs to win this year, because I want to see LeBron win one for Cleveland. Just like last year, I was a little bit more lenient toward the Warriors, just because I said, you know what? A jump shooting team needs to finally win a championship. Plus, um, you know, I mean, this is just a team that nobody saw coming. But this year, I really want LeBron to, you know, win a championship for his hometown. I just think it'd be really cool to see. So that's where I stand on, on the finals right now. Now, with that being said, game six was interesting. Um, but the Andrew Bogut injury is kind of sad to me because while it does give the Cavs more of a chance because it hurts the Warriors inside defensively and offensively for that fact, um, it's, he played for the University of Utah, and so I, you know, just, just like the guy because of where he went to college. And it sucks to see him injured in the NBA Finals, you know, it, it's, it's sad. But, it is what it is, you know? Now, on to the next thing. Okay, LeBron played out of his goddamn mind. And Kyrie played pretty damn well, too. Um, I don't see a reason why LeBron doesn't have another good performance in Game 7. I think LeBron will. It all comes down to what his teammates do. Does Kyrie come out and give you 30 points? Does Kyrie give you, you know, 25? What does Kyrie do? Because I think I think what Kyrie does matters a lot in the future. Next thing, Steph Curry. I don't think he should be suspended. Um, honestly, I mean, as much as I think as much as I think he should be because he threw his mouthpiece, and obviously that'd be the correct way to handle the situation. Um, I just feel like that, that gives that gives Golden State too many excuses for the future. I want their fans, if they lose, to have no excuses and just have to accept the fact that they lost to the Cavs. I don't want any excuses at all. Plus, he is the MVP, and while I don't think he deserved to be unanimous MVP, and I didn't think he was MVP last season, I do not want to see him out of an NBA Finals game. Anyway, Kevin Love also had a couple of points, you know, but I mean, I just, I don't think, I don't think he's a big piece anymore. I think he's honestly just an afterthought. You know, he's going to get a couple of rebounds here and there, and he's going to hit a, maybe one or two threes, and he's going to, you know, just do that. But other than that, his job is to just kind of sit there and play defense, basically. And, I mean, I realize he can be a defensive liability, but he's kind of stepped his game up these past couple of games, and I can respect that. Um, J.R. Smith, he has to continue to shoot well. If he doesn't shoot well in Game 7, the series is over for Cleveland. Um, he, has, he has to shoot well. If he shoots well and LeBron has a good game and Kyrie has a good game, I think the Cavs win their title. Um, but JR is the X factor here for me. Um, cause obviously, you know, Iman Shumpert is not the guy to take over, you know, and to be that guy that can step in when JR is not going. Now, next thing I saw, Dante Jones and Tristan Thompson. I gotta speak on this cause Tristan Thompson is an interesting player because I think, I think he'll have a decent game seven. I don't see him having a terrible game seven. I think he'll come out, maybe have 10 points. He'll probably have a pretty decent one. You know, they'll get him involved, passing, get him at the rim. He'll probably knock down his free throws. The real thing that I worry about with Tristan Thompson is can he continue to rebound like he does? But I think he can. I don't think he'll have an issue. But if he doesn't, game over for Cavs. If, if he rebounds, if he keeps rebounding like he has been, Okay, they have a very good chance. So, you know, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Um, 
for him. Now, Dante Jones, this is interesting because this gives them a guy off the bench that can play well. And I feel like they need a guy who's on their bench they don't normally go to that can be good. Whether this is Mo Williams, Dante Jones, whoever. Now, let's talk about the Warriors, okay? Because we just talked a lot about the Cavs. Let's talk about these Warriors for a minute. I feel like the Warriors don't really have to worry about anything, to be honest. I mean, this team is just good. Uh, ho hopefully, Iggy isn't too hurt. Because, I mean, if Iggy, if Iggy is too hurt to really keep up with LeBron, I think it's a GG, and this game is just over. I think the Cavs will win the title easily. Maybe not easily, it might be close, but I don't see a way that the Warriors win Game 7 if Andre is not healthy. So I think I think Iguodala has to be healthy. Anyway. Um, what else? Oh yeah, um, Twitter. Aisha Curry. Posting about the NBA being rigged. Listen, I gotta I gotta speak on this because I was saying the same thing in the OKC series. Because what I saw when it was OKC and GSW, what I saw in game six was you know the Warriors getting cooked, but then late in game six, OKC is about to close this series out. And then Clay took over, yes. But I remember um, OKC only down like a point and there was like I, I think there was like 56.4 like 54.6 seconds yeah 54.6 seconds I remember exactly Russell Westbrook was running down the court and Clay reached in and they called it out of bounds on Westbrook even though it was a reach in call and he actually got no ball it was completely on um Russell Westbrook's elbow. So that this is this is definitely something that you know you you got you got to wonder about is you know I mean the NBA could be rigged. Who knows? But my thing to Aisha Curry is why are you speaking on it when all year the rigging quote unquote because I mean we don't know if it's actually rigged. I mean we can only assume. But I mean, from what we've seen on the NBA, um, on the NBA website, where it had the Warriors winning in seven, or where they were already selling tickets to the Thunder and to the to the Warriors and Cavs finals before Game Seven of the Conference Finals, I mean, there was a lot of things. There was a lot of things that it's kind of like, okay, like this is getting a little bit, you know, strange here. And you almost wonder, you almost wonder, you know? But here's my thing. It's been benefiting the Warriors. Pretty much all of the quote-unquote rigging has been benefiting the Warriors. But now Aisha Curry, now that it doesn't benefit them, wants to cry about it. Listen, you have gotten pretty much 99% of the rigging quote-unquote going your way. So why are you mad? Why are you mad? You know, I understand it was a big game, but why are you mad? You got you got that treatment all season and in the playoffs. Doesn't make sense why you would get mad like that. Now, um, next thing, um, I was I was gonna I was gonna mention something. And I forgot. I was thinking about it before I started this. This is all just off the top, so I'm literally just trying to remember what I was gonna say. But um, oh yeah, yeah. Another thing. I remember on TV, like like on ESPN, places like that. The OKC, like when the Warriors were coming back from the deficit, it was the greatest thing ever. They were the greatest team ever. Oh my God, they're coming back from this deficit against OKC. I can't believe it. Warriors are going to win it all. Warriors, 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 right? And then, now that Cleveland is coming back from 3-1, it's rigged. Like, even, even ESPN is getting in on saying it could be rigged. And I'm trying to figure that out because 
Where were y'all when OKC was getting absolutely screwed? You know, where were you? Where were you? Because now you're, you're here for GSW, but where were you for OKC is my question. Because OKC got absolutely screwed. Okay. So, I mean, and I don't think it's rigged necessarily. I think there's times where maybe money or ratings or um, players and markets can get involved. But this wouldn't make sense for that other than there's a game seven. But I mean, you gotta think, like, this doesn't really help players because how is this helping LeBron by sending it to game seven? It's on the road, you know, in a hostile crowd. It's pretty much helping Steph, if you think about it. It's helping Steph because if they win, they win at home in front of their home fans. So this helps them, not really the Cavs. Because the Cavs have to go into a hostile environment. Like, it, yeah, so it, it just don't make a lot of sense. Like, like a little bit of an example, in my opinion, and, th and this is just me saying this, back in 2014, in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs, there was a series between the second-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder and the seventh-seeded Memphis Grizzlies, okay? And... Oh, oh, three, Kyrie, bang, bang. Anyway, that was a mean cross. Can we get a replay of that? That was a mean cross. I just, I have to, I have to play that back real quick. Oh, it was on Steph. I thought it was on Clay. Just Kyrie, just, whoop. oh, God. Oh, 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 Steph. Oh, God, Steph. Steph just died. His ankles are gone. Kyrie, bang, bang. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Okay. In a game six, it was a blowout in OKC's favor. This was a closeout game at home for the Memphis Grizzlies, and they did not capitalize. Now, late in the game, after after a shot was made, I'm pretty sure it was after a shot was made, Steven Adams pushed Zach Randolph from behind. Zach Randolph then retaliated by with the league classified as a punch to the face, I don't think it looked like a push. Like, he kind of just put his hand on his face and, like, kind of nudged him. He didn't even look like a punch, but the league called it a punch. I don't know in what world that was a punch. But anyway, a lot of people are saying, well, will Zebo get suspended for this? And a lot of people are saying, well, you'd have to suspend Adams, too, because he initiated all of the, you know, the confrontation. Well, it comes to, well, what happened was Zebo was suspended and Steven Adams got off. And my opinion of this was, well, if you think about it, I mean, market doesn't really make sense because these are two small markets. But OKC is the more marketable team only because of Durant and Westbrook. What would you rather have winning? Like, like if you were somebody who didn't really watch basketball, who was a casual fan, who would you rather see on the marquee? Okay, would you rather see Mike Conley, Corey Lee, or Courtney Lee, excuse me, Courtney Lee, you know, Mark Gasol, Zach Randolph, Tony Allen. Would you rather see those guys, or would you rather see Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Serge Ibaka, Reggie Jackson? He just came off a 30-point game, basically saved their team. I mean, Durant and Westbrook combined were shooting like 22% in that series, and Reggie Jackson had like a 30-point game to keep him in the series. So, I don't know. I don't know. You guys, you guys could tell me, but I'm just saying, I felt like that had to do more with players, team, and marketing. Okay. Not really a market, just marketing. So, I mean, you could take it out as. I mean, I feel like some decisions come down to just favorites. And the NBA has favorites. But a lot of people are saying that LeBron is a favorite. Well, what about Steph Curry? You don't think Steph Curry is a favorite? Steph Curry is only a favorite until things don't go his way. Then all of a sudden, he is no longer a favorite. Anyway, guys, that is all I have to say about Game 6. Um, I will be making that video about LeBron right after this. So that should be up. Anyway, until the once the NBA season is over, I will have a series on 2K where I rebuild the team. So stick around for that. And until next time, guys, 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Michael Bryson underscore. And until next time, this is Michael signing out. Peace.